for another Guru's Rant today. I hope you're doing really well. I hope you find my videos informative. And I hope that you've been enjoying my videos. You enjoy what I have to say. And hopefully you find that what I say inspires you to seek the truth in your training. And to seek the truth and to inspire yourself so that you train more. You make training part of your everyday life. At the end of the day, style or no style or instructor or no instructor, it is you who makes yourself better. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the time. And it's your responsibility to seek out an instructor or a mentor or a teacher who can guide you and coach you appropriately. Now, it's that mentor or teacher's responsibility to give you the truth about training, to show you the most scientific way to train, and to show you the most holistic way to train not only for the here and now, but for later on in your years, in your life. <clears throat> a lot of times in the martial arts, a student will seek out an instructor based on the fame of the instructor or whatever the case may be, or the touted experience of the instructor. But they fail to ever ask that instructor what real experience they have. You know, what, how many fights have they been in their life? What, what experience do they have with a knife? You know, what, what experience have they gone through? How have they survived anything that they're teaching? How have they survived or used it to survive in any kind of scenario? A lot of times people follow instructors blindly without ever questioning these things or without even putting to the test the instructor or putting the, the methodology to the test. Now, I'm not saying every instructor necessarily has to be a good fighter to be a good instructor. You have some that are good fighters, and then you have some that are just good teachers. Then you have people who can do both. You have some that are good fighters, but they're terrible teachers. And then you have some that are great teachers, but terrible fighters. <laughs> the key is you need to find a coach or a mentor or a teacher, whatever you want to call him or her, that can truly guide you and make you better. That can understand how to take you from the level you're at right now to a level that's better. Without subordination, without trying to um, make you their lackey, without trying to keep you at a level beneath them so that you'll never get better than them. There's a lot of instructors like that. I know one Maha Super Guru Pendakar, Avenger of the martial arts of Sirak, who told me in private, Oh, I don't fight the way I teach you guys. I fight a whole different other way. Because his ego let that slip. There was another man who did something like this. Unfortunately, that man is not, no longer with us. He was a fellow that was very good at what he did, but also very cocky. And he became a huge movie star and an icon in the martial art world. Well, originally he taught or discovered or taught and experimented how to truly fight. And then later on, when he became famous, he decided not to teach people how to fight. He just decided to teach them some basic principles and things and basic techniques so that he could make money. That fellow went by the name of Bruce Lee. And if you ever talk to any of his original core students, they will tell you that there's a difference between Jeet Kune Do and Jun Fan Kung Fu. There's a difference between his methodology that he personally uses to fight and the stuff that everybody's marketing as Jeet Kune Do. Well, the same thing happens in the sea lot world and in a lot of the martial art worlds. You get these instructors that will give you half-truths and they pose themselves as these superior giants in these arts. And maybe they are really good. Maybe they do have some skill. Some of them do for sure. I think C. Joe Bruce Lee definitely had some skill. Was his skill necessarily better than other masters at his level? Probably not. But he kept his lackeys subordinate. 
the ones that came later on. So they're paying him money to learn, but he never makes them really better than them. A true instructor, a true guru, a true master will always teach his students to be better than him or her. So I know of one Sarak Maha Pendakar guru who claims his ways are superior to everybody. But his students look like shit. His students don't know, unfortunately, they're being blindly robbed without understanding what they're even knowing or what they're being taught. And I saw this there because I visited him several times. I've seen his students. Some of his students have come to me. Some of his students, well, some of my students went to him and came back. And we know the difference. We've seen the difference. The problem is, he's this particular instructor is giving people half-truths. Well, as he says in his own words, if you have a half-truth, it's still a lie. So unfortunately, a lot of his students are repeating and per perpetuating these lies. And they have the audacity to talk crap about me, and talk crap about my instructor, Uncle Willem de Toires, without actually knowing jack shit about Sorok or jack shit about the family history. Who trained and who didn't train? Who actually put time in with the different uncles of the art, the real elders of the art? There's no Maha Guru today in America that has truly seen the old uncles train. So they don't really know what it is. They don't really know the curriculum. They have parts of the curriculum. They have pieces of the curriculum. So they have a pizza pie with some ingredients missing. So then they're reverse engineering the art by adding other stuff to it to try to evolve it and do whatever it is that they want to do to it to make it somehow better than what they currently had or what piece of the pie they did have. And that's understandable because that's the level of knowledge they got. So this would be like in music if a student was only trained by his ear but nobody ever taught him music theory or counterpoint or harmony, classical harmony or jazz harmony. He would be playing by his ear. Now he could be very good by playing with his ear, okay? But he would never go to that peak of somebody like a Mozart or a Bach or a Beethoven who had not only the ear, but also the actual science, the full curriculum, the full understanding. So, I invite all students of Penchak Silat Sirak to question everybody, question everything, study everything, and leave no stone unturned, and see for yourself if you have been taught accurately, and if you've been told the truth. I did that, and I still do that. I went and saw people who trained under Pendek or Paul de Tours. I spoke with Paul de Tours. May he rest in peace. I also spent time with his son. I saw what his son does. His son knows a lot. He knows a lot about his father's art. He knows a lot about his father's line. I will never take that away from Pendek or Paul's son. Him and I may not agree on certain things, but what he knows from his father is legit, and it's very good, and it's different, and also a more complete understanding of what his father was doing compared to the Mahagurus, the so-called Mahagurus that come in that line. That being said, on a further note, Uncle Willem de Tours, Baba Willem de Tours, and his brother, Om Maurice de Tours, also have a very complete picture of Penchak Silat Sarak. They have an understanding that Pendeker Paul did not have. He has a different understanding. It's a different line. It's a different piece. This is a big art. There's a lot of expressions, a lot of understanding. There's a lot of science behind it. So you cannot just pretend. That's like you know, that's like people in politics or in religions that think that, oh, because my religion's the truth, no other religion has the truth. Well, you're wrong about that. Or that's like saying, you know, we live in America, the rest of the world has no truth. Well, that's wrong. It's the same thing. It's the same thing in Sirach. 
So we have people that perpetuate lies and they're missing knowledge. They're missing understanding about the art. And they claim that they're the lineage holders and that their methodology or their structure is the only way and it's the way. They're wrong. And here's my challenge to them and to their students. Let's sit down. Let's talk about this. Let's touch hands. Let's feel and see what it is that you supposedly claim is the ultimate truth. You know, let's test it out. And not just test it out, let's see your curriculum. Walk your Panjars, walk your Jurus, demonstrate the principles, and do it in front of an actual elder in the art, Baba Willem de Tours, and his instructors, people like myself and other people who've trained as well, and see if maybe you're missing pieces in your art. Maybe there's things you're, you're doing wrong or you're doing it uh, in excess. Maybe you're doing things because you're not sure of what you're doing, so you're making shit up. Let's see. Let's go through the old archives. That's the only way to find out, right? In science, you test things. So anyhow, this is a long rant. But I urge and challenge the students of all these Mahagurus to ask their gurus to show them how did Om Maurice move? How did Om Willem move? Or how does Om Willem move? How does Pendeker Paul truly move? Because, see, I have footage of Pendeker Paul and of Om Maurice and of Om Willem. And I can tell you how the three of them moved. And I can tell you right now with confidence that Mahaguru Avenger Graham Puba in America does not move like the three of those. He moves his own way. And that's okay too. But then call it your art. Don't say that it's the Sera or the Serak or the true lineage of the Detoir Serak because you're full of shit. You're lying to people. And you know it and I know it. You cannot fool me. And your students, they don't know any better. So shame on you for not telling them the truth and not showing them the true curriculum. Anyhow, there are several other Grand Pubas, Grand Maha Pendikars, who will go ahead and denounce me and denounce Uncle Willem de Tours and call us crazy and go as far as to say things like, I practice black magic and Uncle Willem practices black magic and he's gotten my mind and he's controlling me somehow with his juju <laughs> we laugh at you okay we really do and thank you for assuming that Uncle Willem is that fucking powerful like a Jedi that he can control my mind and the fact that you believe that just shows you how stupid and ignorant you are here's the truth my students and myself we have tested it out. We've tested Om Uncle Paul's curriculum. We've tested what all you Grand Mahaguru Pendakars have taught me. And we have found that a lot of that stuff is obsolete. Why? Because you're missing the entire picture. You only have some of the ingredients. Therefore, you're re-engineering shit without understanding it. You're like the people trying to reverse engineer the iPhone. You're behind the curve. You've been behind the curve. My question to all of you is how come, Mr. Grand Guru Pendakar, how come your students, nor you, nor the other Mahagurus, how come none of you move like the Detoirs? How come you cannot move like that? You claim you do, but you don't. Anyhow, I encourage you all to seek the truth without bullshit, find out for yourself, make sure you question everything in your training. And if it is that you want to learn Penchak Silat Serak, then go learn it. If you like any of these Grand Puba, Maha Pendakar, Avenger, Super, Ultra, Mega Man, Silat Gurus, then go train with them. But know this, no man is an island unto himself, and none of these guys 
have the time and grade that somebody like Om Willem de Tours has in the art. You're talking about someone that has been doing that family art for over 70 years. Maybe you just need to get off your high horses and find out if you're missing things in your art.